G'day guys, Justin here coming at you with another NBA video, this time a summary of the first round of the 2018 NBA playoffs. And these guys to me were the MVPs for their team, for the winning teams of each first round series. So without further ado, let's get into it. So as we look at the first matchup here, we have the Toronto Raptors uh, as the first seed, defeating the eight seed Washington Wizards four to two. And the MVP of this series for me was DeMar DeRozan of the Toronto Raptors. In the series, he had 26.7 points per game, 3.3 rebounds per game, and 4.8 assists per game. Both numbers, uh, would like to send them a little higher. Everyone's expected to raise their level of performance in the playoffs. Scoring dipped compared to the regular season, but Again, you'd like to see that a little higher. That's also responsible for the fact that his field goal dipped down to 43.6%. 0.3 are up in two blocks per game. His defense was basically um, unimaginable and basically not there, but at the same time, who plays defense in this league uh, anymore? 2.5 turnovers, reasonably efficient. Nothing to scoff at there. 38.5% from deep, good to great, you know, good to very good three point shooting, and 81% from the stripe. Nothing to complain about. His performances across their four wins they won games one, two, five, and six, uh, winning three games at home, um, three of their four wins being at home. Uh, as we look here, in game one, he had 17 points, two rebounds, six assists and two turnovers, 35.3% from the field, 40% from deep, and 75 from the stripe. Certainly an underwhelming performance there. However, game two certainly lifted and certainly showed why he was arguably the leader of this team throughout the regular season. 37 points, five rebounds, four assists. Certainly can't complain there. No defensive numbers to speak of. In fact, no defensive numbers in any of these home wins, which does speak volumes to how they pretty much just had to outscore their opponent. Their defensive game wasn't there. Two turnovers and shooting, pretty much nothing to complain about, about except the free throw shooting. 60.9% from the field, 50% from deep, and 75% from the stripe. Game five saw a win on the row, uh, saw a return win here for the Raptors uh, in their third home game. 32 points, two rebounds, five assists. We'd like to see the rebound up a bit more. Uh, four turnovers, inefficient use occasionally, but again, can't scoff at that when you're getting the win. 50% uh, from the field, can't complain. 75% from deep, can't complain. 83.3% from the stripe, can't complain. Another reasonably rounded game, albeit no defense. And in game six, certainly wasn't the reason that they won this game, but uh, when you're responsible for two of four victories, then you certainly got a very good case for being MVP. So looking at it from here, we have 16 points, two rebounds, four assists, and a terrible shooting night from the field, 33.3%, probably a credit as to why he has low points. Didn't make a three, another big credit as to why he has low points. However, 100% from the stripe made the most of it. So certainly capitalized on his opportunities there and was able to help Toronto get the 4-2 win over Washington in the first round. As we move to the Western Conference, uh, the first versus eighth seed there, it was Houston accounting for Minnesota four games to one. And the MVP for the Rockets, for me, was James Harden. 29 points per game, 4.8 rebounds per game, 7.4 assists per game. Similar numbers uh, to his regular season. However, again, it is noted that if you're going to lead your team, you need to step up in productivity in the playoffs. Again, Houston, a deep team. However, it's still not acceptable, in my opinion, to see those numbers drop. Defense, surprisingly good defensive numbers. Defensive player, on the other hand, you need to go and look at and really assess. 2.4 steals and 1.2 blocks looks great, but when you look at the effort that he actually puts in on defense and his ability to play defense, not necessarily reflective of his outing. 2.8 turnovers, very efficient for James Harden. I'll give him all the credit in the world there. However, it is noted that when he was efficient with the ball, he was inefficient shooting. 41.1% from the field, certainly not acceptable. He needs to be shooting... Uh, no less than 47, 48% for me. So that's a massive fail there. However, 38.5% from deep and 86.8% from the stripe. Good, solid numbers there on nothing but shooting form. Um, again, I mentioned the fact of his defensive numbers. You need to go and assess his whole game defensively to really reflect those numbers. Similar to a LeBron and a Westbrook and their rebounds and assists. How do they get them? How tough are they? Uh, as we go ahead and look, he had... Uh, as you pretty much see there, one bad game, 
across all of the four wins. That was game two. Other than that, well-rounded. Started game one uh, with a tremendous scoring output. 44 points, four rebounds, eight assists. So still distributing the ball. Two steals. Uh, again, need to look at how he gets those steals. And three turnovers. Can't complain there for the turnover side of things. 57.7% from the field. Nothing to scoff at. 58.3% from deep. Certainly nothing to scoff at. However... For a guy who gets to the line that much, he needs to shoot a hell of a lot better. 77.8%. Unacceptable for me. An elite guard should be shooting no no less than uh, 80%. Someone like James Harden should be shooting, you know, that high echelon 80%, you know, high 80s from the stripe. Game two, terrible game by his standards. Uh, 12 points, four rebounds, seven assists. Three steals, three blocks. Does look okay. Probably one of the better defensive efforts he actually gave all season. Three turnovers uh, below what he would normally put in. Uh, but then you go look at the shooting form at 11.1% from the field and 10% from three. That's downright pathetic and unacceptable from a leader and a guy who's supposedly going to be the MVP this year. Again, not my MVP, but if he gets voted, I'm not shocked. 87.5 from the strike, better from the free throw line, but you can't sacrifice parts of your game to have efficient in other areas. You've got to be a rounded superstar in this league, uh, and that's something that Harden has always struggled with. Uh, game four did bounce back. Um, as you can see there, they dropped game three. However, coming back to game four, 36 points, um, four rebounds, three assists, four steals and a block. Again, you need to really see how those numbers work in comparison. Just having raw numbers doesn't always reflect effort. One turnover, so efficient with the ball. I can't fault that. He can be an awfully efficient player at times. But again, as you can see, he's got to sacrifice parts of his game for the other to be better. Some players sacrifice their numbers but their game still remain the same. So as we look here, 46.2% from the field, not great, um, but certainly pushing that 47 mark eventually. 45.5 from deep and 100% from the stripe. They're very good and, you know, to great numbers there in that shooting department. In game five, rounded it out with 24 points, five rebounds, 12 assists, two steals, two blocks, and three turnovers. So a good closeout game there in those numbers. However, when you look at the fact that he shot... 38.1% from the field, a lot to be desired on that front. As I mentioned, a guy like Harden should be accepting no less than 47, 48% from the field. It's as plain and simple as that. 36.4 from deep. Uh, again, a guy who should be shooting almost 40% from deep with his attempts. And 100% from the free throw line, the form he should have in general. Moving to our next Eastern Conference matchup, it was the second seed Boston Celtics versus the seventh seed Milwaukee Bucks, which went to a pretty good, it wasn't necessarily the most memorable, but it was a pretty good seven-game series. And to me, probably the most underappreciated Celtic this year, and certainly their best player in this series for me, was Al Horford. 18.1 points per game, 8.7 rebounds per game, and 3.3 assists per game, along with 0.7 steals and 1.4 blocks, not necessarily reflecting the total numbers he had, but when you look at the wins and his ability in those wins, he was certainly responsible for, you could argue, three of the four games they won. 2.4 turnovers, reasonably efficient there, and shooting numbers, certainly nothing to scoff at. Really good shooting numbers for a big in particular, uh, when you look there. 58.8 uh, from the field, 43.8 from deep, and 76.5 from the stripe. Certainly can't complain there. Again, you look at the efficiency with possession. Had a really good series. Game 1, 24 points, 12 rebounds. No complaints there for me. Four assists, no complaints. Uh, three blocks is a big, no complaints. Two steals, that's a bonus. And only one turnover. Again, probably his best shooting night all year. Um, or Well, pretty close to it. When you look at the fact that he shot 62.5 from the field. 50% of those, you know, 50% making from deep and over 90% from the free throw line is, you know, tremendous for any player, let alone a big. Game two, certainly tampered away a little bit. Uh, a lot of the young guys were leading the charge in this one. 16 points, five rebounds, four assists for our. Uh, really want to see those rebound numbers get up there. Can't accept a big man getting no less than 10. He's one of those bigs, but, you know, occasionally he has a performance. Uh, four assists, two steals, no blocks. That disappoints me as a, for a big guy. Um, however, his field shooting and efficiency certainly comes up. As you can see, no turnovers there, but 63.6 .6 from the field, 100% from deep, no complaints there whatsoever. If you're going to take three-point shots, you've got to make three-point shots, and that's something that Al has the ability to do. 50% from the stripe, unacceptable, no matter who you are. Uh, as I said, I've mentioned it a lot in the regular season, my bigs need to shoot at least 70% from the stripe, and he didn't do that this game. 
Game five, another tremendous all-around game for him. 22 and 14, uh, as far as points and rebounds are concerned. Three assists. Uh, as a passer, he's a reasonably good big man passer. Not great, but reasonably good. Two blocks, good to see him getting back there, uh, rim protecting as he should. Six turnovers is where it lets him down, though. Um, you know, played a little bit of defense, but certainly inefficient and proving it costly at times. And again, that's reflected in the fact that he shot 46.7% from the field and 60 percent from the free throw line needed to up those numbers to make up for those turnovers so you know as much as he contributed he certainly hampered in that particular area 40 percent from deep can't complain again gonna take him you gotta make him um and 40 percent for anyone in this league is pretty good from deep game seven a big closeout game for him efficient closeout game for him from the field however uh, one would suggest that his shooting a little be desired 26.8 rebounds three assists Reasonably well-rounded game. Again, don't like the fact that he's under 10 rebounds, but putting in the points. One steal and one block. Ugh, want to see a bit more rim protection from the big fella. He's arguably their only major rim protector there in that squad. Uh, 76.5 from the field, so uber-efficient in his scoring. Probably could have touched a bit more. But again, if he's going to take three-point shots, got to make them. Didn't make them. And free throws, very much to be desired. Didn't convert one of them. Those, as I've heard from people before, our players, bread and butter. Moving back to the Western Conference and their second versus seventh seed matchup. The Golden State easily accounting for San Antonio 4-1 and one, and Kevin Durant certainly the MVP for the Warriors. Pretty reasonably well-rounded game. His defense certainly dropped off in the second half of the year and it has a little bit here as well. I want to see the guy lift. Um, he is capable of lifting defensively and being arguably the best all-round player in the game. Um, something that he needs to work on a little more. 28.2 points per game, 8.6 rebounds per game, and 5.2 assists per game. Can't complain there on those numbers. 0.6 steals and you know 0.8 blocks. Durant's very much capable of being a 1.5, 1.5 guy defensively. There's no doubt about it. Uh, 3.6 turnovers. Ugh. Three turnovers for me would be acceptable for him. Uh, it does have a high usage rate, but again, 3.6, you know, what can you do? You're trying to get through, trying to get possession, trying to win the game. 48% from the field, can't complain there. Want to see him shooting 50%. He is quite capable of doing that with ease. 25% uh, from deep, jumper was a little off, but made up for it at the stripe at 94.6%. In game one, 24, 9, and 7 to go with two steals. Good all-around game there. Uh, high turnover rate, though, which isn't helpful. 50% from the field, as you can see, in three of their four wins, he shot over 50%, so I can't complain there. 25% from deep. And 100% from the free throw line. Just improve pretty much your uh, possession, uh, efficiency with possession, and your three-point shooting, and you're fine. Game two, 32-6-6 uh, six and six with one block. Would have liked to have seen maybe a couple more defensive numbers there. Turnover numbers low, and all-around shooting not too bad. Just want to see the three-point shot grow a bit there. Again, 52.6 from the field, no complaints. 90% from the stripe, no complaints. But Durant's capable of being a 38% three-point shooter. There's no doubt about that, even for a big... Again, Durant's one of those ones who I grade a little heavier because Durant is a perimeter player, similar to a Larry Bird. Larry Bird was 6'9", 6'10". Durant's, you know, that 6'10 mark, maybe even 7 foot. But these guys are shooters. They have a shooting stroke. It's not like someone like a Boogie Cousins, you know, or a, a, another big who, you know, their primary objective was scoring inside out, not outside in. Um, Bird scored inside, there's no doubt about that. Uh, Durant scores inside as well, but... You know, they're more remembered as perimeter players, so to speak. Uh, in game three, 26, 9, and 6, another good game. Four turnovers, again, possession is key. Two of his three categories, again, shooting over 50% from the field, shot 100% from the stripe, but needs to make those three point bombs. Something that this Warriors side really misses when Steph Curry is in the squad is the ability to extend that floor. Um, and extend the defense a hell of a lot more. Uh, that's why I think Curry becomes just as valuable, if not more valuable, than Durant to this team. Again, 16.7% isn't what you want. Durant can be another 20 points, you know, 22 points higher uh, in that department there. In game five, uh, really, you know, they already had the foot on the throat, but he certainly just sort of eased through this game. 25 points, six rebounds, five assists. Okay, defensive numbers. One steals, two blocks, a bit more uh, rounded. But again, that efficiency with possession needs to be looked at. Five turnovers is unacceptable for Durant, considering in his MVP season, he was one of the most efficient players on both ends of the floor. And again, his shooting woes continued. However, it transferred from three uh, to the field. 42.1% from the field. Unacceptable for a guy who routinely shot 50% in their wins this uh, 
this series and chop 48% from the series. 48% from the field this series, so below par there. 12.5% from deep, totally unacceptable no matter who you are. But again, 100% from the free throw line. He was getting to the line, he was making them when he took them, and that's what you like to see. Moving on to the third versus sixth uh, seed matchup, starting in the Eastern Conference. Philadelphia easily accounting for Miami uh, besides Game 2, taking that series 4-1. And for me, there was no question Ben Simmons was Philadelphia's MVP. 18.2 points per game, 10.6 rebounds per game, and 9 assists per game in his debut playoff series. Certainly nothing to scoff at. I've mentioned this before. If guys like Donovan Mitchell, Ben Simmons, and guys like Jason Tatum are going to be the face and the uh, you know of that era and that generation for the next 10, 15 years, you throw in guys like Giannis who are going to be a bit more senior, uh, and an Anthony Davis who are going to be a bit more senior. This league is in very good hands for years to come. So again, 18.2, 10.6, and 9 assists. 2.4 steals. Again, he's arguably one of the better defenders in the league, even as a rookie. So no surprise there. Blocks. If you're going to get those rebounds, I want to see you with a bit more rim protection. You know, one block would have even been more sufficient. But, you know, that's always to be worked on. He's only a rookie. Four turnovers. Again, high possession rate as a point guard. He wants to really hurry up and knock that down, though. Uh, I mean, the pace of the game does dictate turnovers a bit more, but it certainly isn't a good look. And again... Shot okay, 50% from the field, can't complain, but he needs to work on that shooting stroke, both from deep and the free throw line. Simmons is going to have to be a guy who's going to shoot 80% from the free throw line, and he's going to have to be a guy who makes at least a third of his three-point shots. I know he plays inside a lot, but he's going to have to get that jumper to be relied upon as a scoring option when someone like an Embiid isn't available. As we go across uh, all of their wins in Game 1, 17 points, 9 rebounds, 14 assists. Very good debut for a guy in his first playoff game. Two steals, that's great. Five turnovers, huh, didn't actually discredit a lot of his assists. And, I mean, he got the steals as well, so trying to make up with that in a sense. However, those turnover numbers, high, probably wants to work on that. Shooting to be desired, 38.5%. This is a guy who's shot 50% throughout these playoffs uh, as of the end of the first round and shot over 50% in the regular season, so a well below par average there, and just unacceptable. 70% from the free throw line, uh, it's close to the average, but it's, you know, his playoff average, but it's, you know, it's still not acceptable for me. I want him to be an 80% shooter. Um, but again, not a bad return for a guy who's a rookie. You've got to remember that. It is only his first season. It was only his first playoff game. So we head over to game three in their second win. 19 points, 12 rebounds, 7 assists, and 4 steals. Three turnovers, they're dropping down. His assist numbers did drop. Would like to have seen maybe a bit more distribution, but they got the win. 46.2%. Um, again, you're a 50% shooter at worst. So that need, scorer at worst, I should say. He's not a shooter, he's a scorer. Uh, as if you're going to categorise his scoring, he's a general scorer. He's not a shooter. He's an inside-out player. 46.2%. Again, needs to be a lot higher. No threes made. If you're going to make, if you're going to take him, you've got to make him. Ben Simmons can't shoot a three-point shot. He needs to not shoot three-point shots. Uh, but 87.5%, again, getting those free throw numbers up, that's key when you're not going to hit uh, consistent jumpers. Uh, game four, 17 point, uh, triple-double alert for all of you that are fascinated with triple-doubles. 17 points, 13 rebounds, 10 assists with four steals. Good numbers there, but then you count the turnovers, and he was a little costly. But he did make up from it for the field, 61.5% as a scorer. And his free throws dropped again to 25%. That's a serious problem. His shooting stroke needs to be worked on. I know we talked about Markel Fultz and his terrible shooting stroke, but it's form and consistency. Uh, he has an okay shooting style, but it's the form and consistency that he has with it that's the real worry. And what could actually cost uh, the 76ers and Simmons, if you ask me. Game 5 uh, had a reasonably decent finish. Uh, it was more of an MB game, but to me, uh, Simmons was the reason they won the series. 14 points, 10 rebounds, 6 assists with 2 steals and a block. Good defensive numbers, and surprisingly, 3 turnovers. Not too bad. Uh, shot well from the stripe. You know, shot very well from the stripe, no complaints. But 40% from the field, this is a guy who set his standard at 50%. You can't keep dipping below that. It's just unacceptable. Um, I know he's a rookie, but you can't set a standard and not live up to it. Really, when you look at it, in the wins, he only shot over 50% once. They shot very well in their loss, but they lost. So his production wasn't there. Again, he was the key contributor and the key reason I feel they won this series, but he does have some things to work on. Again, he is a rookie. He does have time, but 
is going to take a lot if you're going to get through to the conference finals and potentially the NBA finals with that sort of effort. Okay, as we move over here, we move to the third and sixth seed of the Western Conference, and it was probably the most dominant um, a player was not only for the playoffs so far, um, but it was probably the most dominant team performance uh, in the first round, and that was New Orleans as the sixth seed, sweeping the third seed Portland Trailblazers. Um, I will be fixing that up as I read it. It says 4-2, to two, but no, they definitely swept them. There were only four games in this series, and New Orleans won them without question. The MVP, without a doubt, Anthony Davis of the New Orleans Pelicans. His numbers were ridiculous in the regular season. He had one of the better, be he had arguably the best season for a big man since Tim Duncan in 2002. Uh, became one of, I believe it was only 14 seasons, top five in points, rebounds, and blocks. Again, he made no exceptions about his ability to play both ends, and he did that again in the playoffs. 33 points per game, 11.8 rebounds per game, 1.3 assists. Again, he plays with Drew Holiday and Rondo. If he has high assists, they're not doing their job, and he's taken away from them. 1.8 steals, 2.8 blocks. You know, best defender in the game for me on on ball, off ball, and again, his ability, you know, for help defense, all that kind of stuff. 2.8. Blocks, again, as I just mentioned, but 2.5 turnovers, efficient possession. You know, he's scoring 33, and he's only turning it over two and a half times. He's doing really well. 57.6% uh, from the field, no complaints there. 30% from deep. Again, Davis is a guy who needs to probably lift that a little more. He does take a few outside jumpers, but 81.6 from the strike, no complaints there. Let's just look. His game by games are just ridiculous. He had no less than 10 rebounds. He had no less than 20 points and 10 rebounds in every game. Um, no less than two blocks in every game. I mean, what else can you say for the man? Game one, 35 and 14. So 35 points, 14 rebounds, two steals, four blocks, the one assist, three turnovers, was efficient. Uh, was taking three pointers but wasn't making them, and I think that was the downfall for him there. However, 53.8 from the field, 77.8 from the stripe, can't complain there. A good all-around game for AD. Uh, as we look at game two, probably his quietest game of the series. 22 points, 12 rebounds, one assists, two steals and two blocks. So he's still playing both ends of the floor. I mean, 11 of those 22 came in the third quarter alone and really helped decide the game for New Orleans there. Five turnovers, well to be desired, needs to work on that. Um, as I mentioned, he had three in game one, five in game two, certainly unacceptable. Does need to lift there. 50% from the field, that's a pass mark. 50% from deep, more than a pass mark. But unacceptable in the free throw category. Again, this was his worst game of the series, and it's evident to see why. Game three, 28 11 and 2, uh, to go with three steals, two blocks. Again, the defensive effort and the offensive efforts there. And the efficiency on offense was good 61.1% from the field. Again, you're going to take three pointers, you've got to make him. He didn't do that, which is unfortunate. However, 85.7 from the free throw line. Uh, he made it when he got to the line. That's the main thing. One thing I want to point out again, when his jumper's not falling, he's getting to the hoop, he's getting fouled, he's making these shots. This is what you want. And then the last game, a massive closeout game for Davis. Game four, 47 points, 10 rebounds, one assist, three blocks, and only two turnovers. Tremendous offensive night for Davis and probably the best game of the series for him. And arguably the best game out of the entire playoffs for any player. 65.2 from the field, 50% from deep, 88.2 from the free throw stroke free throw strike almost a flawless series for the best player in the nba uh, and to me was undoubtedly the mvp of that series as new orleans swept portland 4-0 as we look at the fourth versus fifth matchups now we look at the eastern conference in the best game seven series that we've had of the two and easily uh, the best seven game series that we may see all playoffs was a tight contest, but the man known as the King, one of the five to ten greatest players of all time, LeBron James, put the team on his back and was the MVP of this series for me. 34.4 points per game, 10.1 rebounds per game, 7.7 assists per game, 1.4 steals and one block on 3.7 turnover. So he, he dropped his turnover rate, up to scoring a bit, uh, grabbed the rebounds. Again, you need to look at how LeBron gets his rebounds and assists. It is contentious. Defensively, he's not there. His numbers don't reflect what his effort is, and his effort's pathetic. But, I mean, I can't fault the guy for scoring 34 a game on 55% uh, in the playoffs to carry his team. 
35.3% from deep. LeBron needs to be up a little bit more. I believe he's around 37% now in the regular season consistently. And 81.8 from the free throw line is a miracle for him. I mean, you've only got to look here. He averaged no, he had no less than 32 in their wins and averaged 41.8 in order for them to win games. So no shock to see LeBron actually had to average basically 42 a game if the Cavs were going to win this. That's how bad his supporting cast was. Now, I'm not saying they're the worst supporting cast ever. I'm just saying they were very, very poor in this series. I mean, Indiana pushed them to seven and really shouldn't have. Game two, which was their first win. LeBron had 46, 12, and five with two steals and only three turnovers and shot well, 70.8 from the field, nothing to scoff at. 40% from deep, nothing to scoff at. 76.9, we've come to expect that as LeBron's general average for um, his career, really. Um, it's actually a bit lower, I think, but still an okay, to, a good to very good shooting night for LeBron. And again, put the team on his back. Game four, 32 points, 13 rebounds, 7 assists, 2 blocks, 54.5 from the field. Now, again, 0% from the three-point line. Got to take him, got to make him. He didn't do it. 88.9% from the free throw line. LeBron was abnormally great, or abnormally good to great uh, from the free throw line by his standards, which was a shock to see in this series. But again, they got the win, and that evened the ledger at 2-2. Really, when Indiana had the chance to take advantage of it being a 3-1 lead, LeBron in previous years, uh, particularly in the NBA Finals, has been known to let a lot of game four slip, whether it be leading 2-1 or the ability to tie the series at 2-2. LeBron finally came through in a game four. Game five, no shock there, had a monster game, 44, 10 and 8, one steal, one block, five turnovers to be desired, but shooting pretty well, um, certainly more than a pass, 58.3 scoring from the field, 35 from deep, 100% from the free throw line, as I mentioned. His scoring at the free throw line this series was ridiculous by his standards. Um, and hopefully it doesn't run out any time soon because if he doesn't perform in the next round, the Cavs aren't going to make it through. Um, and if they've still got the legs under them, I still don't see him getting out of the Eastern Conference. Game seven, big game, needed to deliver. It was an absolutely tight game. And he delivered 45, nine and seven, four steals. Uh, four turnovers to be desired, but again, four steals makes up for it in a sense there. So offensively, can't fold his productivity there. He put the team on his back and proved why he is one of the all-time greats that the game has ever seen. And his shooting reflected that, and his scoring reflected that. 64 from the field, 66.7 from deep. Again, 73.3, a little to be desired in the free throw category. However, he has been playing exceptionally well um, from the free throw line, and that was the worst he shot in wins. Again, needs to be reiterated, the guy averaged 34 a game on 55% from the field, not shooting, from the field in his scoring category. Um, had three 40-point games in their wins. Uh, he's yet to crack 50, though. He needs to probably have a couple of 50-point games. This playoff run for them to have a chance. Um, but again, had to average 41.8 in order for the Cavs to win. Played exceptional in Game 7. Did what needed to be done. But there's a lot of improvement from him on the defensive end needed. He's going to need to hustle for the ball a bit more. And most importantly... Uh, he's going to have to really score this basketball in order for them to win the next series. And it's just something, unfortunately, I don't see happening. And in the final matchup of the fourth versus fifth seeds in the final playoff series we're here to talk about, that was the Utah Jazz winning four games, defeating Oklahoma City, who won two games. And the MVP of this series was the young rookie, another rookie again, Donovan Mitchell of the Utah Jazz, uh, setting all kinds of joint, well, not setting all kinds of records, but joining elite company um, with the likes of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar for 20-point games and points scored in their day of playoff, you know, points scored in W playoff series and stuff like that. Had a really, really, really good opening series um, and played exceptionally well, something that I don't think we can fault. Now, mind you, as a rookie, uh, 28.5 points per game, 7.2 rebounds per game, 2.7 assists per game. Played really well. Played some tremendous, well, not tremendous, D, but put in a tremendous effort on defense that resulted uh, in his team's wins. They're a good defensive team, Utah. There's no doubt about that. 1.5 steals, 0.7 blocks per game, and only 2.7 turnovers, so good efficiency from the Rook. And, I mean, I can certainly see why people are nominating this guy as their Rookie of the Year. Not for me. Big Ben, he was more consistent, put up more round numbers, was a better defender. But certainly a fair valid reason for people to be voting Donovan Mitchell 
their rookie of the year. 46.2% from the field. Again, he's a rookie. He's going to learn. He's going to improve. But I do want to see that grow. Uh, and I want to see Mitchell eventually being that guy who's got the capabilities of um, scoring, you know, at 48, 49, 50%, and still pouring in those high points numbers. Um, but 46.2, pretty good debut uh, for a rookie yard. Uh, 36.4 from deep, no complaints there. Not necessarily a three-point shooter, but he was making a reasonable amount of them uh, for what he was taking. And 92% from the free throw line, no faults there. Their first win was game two. They went up 3-1 in the series, and there was a lot of rumour there was the potential for them to actually not win um, the series and possibly choke away a 3-1 lead, but it was never going to happen, really. So game two, he had 28.6 rebounds, two assists, and one steal on four turnovers. Shooting to be desired, 40%, and uh, nothing from deep. Four turnovers, certainly nothing impressive. But 88.9 from the stripe. When he got there, he made them, and he took full advantage of it. Game three, uh, had a double-double, 22 points, 11 rebounds, two assists, two steals and a block. So reasonably rounded numbers there. Uh, five turnovers needs to be worked on. Um, however, he didn't actually make or attempt a free throw in this game. 45% from the field. Uh, below, again, what he averaged this is something I want to point out. When you set a benchmark, you've got to live up to it. His regular season surpassed, but he set that standard of 46% from the field for the playoffs. And in three of their four wins, he didn't pass it once. So just something to work on and something to look at, the consistency and roundedness of these guys' games. 45% from the field, 57.1 from deep, no complaints there, absolutely. But if you're going to set the standard at 46%, you've got to be shooting at 46%. He just wasn't doing it in the first two games. Game four, he had higher points, that's for sure. 33 points, his first 30-point playoff game. Uh, seven rebounds, four assists, and one block. 46.4, he passed it there. That's what you want to do. Three-point shooting, passed it there, 37.5%. A good scoring output there. Um, certainly to be desired on the um, the front, but you know he'll eventually improve that, as I mentioned. And 80% from the strike, no complaints there. Shot 92% from the season. Oh, sorry, 92% for the series. That will improve, as I mentioned. But as far as free throws and uh, general um, ability uh, with his shooting stroke, that has improved, and that's good. Uh, and game six, the crucial game six, where he delivered over 20 points in the third quarter, which really helped set up a good Utah win there, despite the closing antics and closing moments of game six. He had 38 points, four rebounds, two assists, and one steal. Five turnovers, nearly cost Utah in the end, but he was efficient with the ball shooting, 53 and scoring, I should say, 53.8 from the field, 62.5 from deep, 100% from the stripe. Tremendous output by the rookie. Utah is in safe hands. The league is in safe hands. Philadelphia is in safe hands. I mean, as I mentioned, um, someone like a Ben Simmons is also, you know, got uh, he's going to have the league in safe hands. These guys have the potential to be good to, you know, good to great players. And if they want to take that extra step, it's just the consistency in the bar they set. As I mentioned, you set the bar in the regular season at 54% shooting, you got to deliver 54% shooting, you know, Mitchell's lucky. He set the bar a little lower for himself at 40, around 40% 40 in the regular season. But if you're going to set it at 46 in the playoffs, you've got to keep shooting at 46 in the playoffs. If you set your free throw bar to be 90% or above, you need to be shooting 90% or above. If you're going to set your three-point bar at 35, 36, you're going to be shooting 35, 36. That's just what you live and die by. That's why there's a lot of players who get criticised, particularly someone like a LeBron, who sets that standard across the season of... 28 points per game on 55% shooting. Well, it's unacceptable for a guy to have the triple-double. Yeah, that's all well and good, a 26-point triple-double. But he shoots 40%. You can't sit there and blame the rebounds and assists, even though he has improved them. The guy's output and his standard is being able to produce on a personal level 28 points and an efficiency of 55%. If he's not doing that, he's not delivering. Rebounds and assists come and go. That's just how they are for a guy like LeBron and for players in general. Uh, particularly when they're hunting them. But sometimes you just got to let the game come naturally and focus on other things. But as I mentioned, someone like a Mitchell has set the bar now. 28.5 points a game on 46% is what he needs to deliver at a minimum for Utah to have any success. That's just how it is. Tremendous performance, though. Certainly not scoffing at that. Well, that's been me, guys. Thank you for listening to my first round wrap-up and seeing who my first round performers were for the first round of the 2018 
NBA playoffs. Uh, hit that like button. Leave a comment who you thought were the best performers of the first round. Who were your MVPs? Um, and how do you feel these players have to perform in their second round matchups? Uh, hit that subscribe button, as always, to stay up to date on my content and all other content regarding the NBA and basketball and sports talk in general. Follow me on Twitter, Justin underscore G underscore Brian, always talking sports, always talking life, always up for interaction. That's just how it is. Shout out to the boost in followers I've had in the past couple of weeks. Hopefully you're enjoying the content. Hopefully you're seeing this video um, and subscribe to the channel as well. Anyway, guys, that's been me. Thank you very much for watching. And I will see you in the next couple of weeks, hopefully. Um, you know, I'm not sure whether they're doing the NBA award show again. I really hope they're not. Um, but I'd like to see some award winners announced uh, in the next few weeks. Uh, I might start doing a few more topical videos in regards to playoff performances and stuff like that. But we'll get around to it. There'll be a few more videos coming and going on the channel. So uh, stick around for that. Anyway, guys, that's been me. Thanks for listening to my uh, voice for the last half an hour. And I'll see you guys in the near future with another NBA video.